Hey guys, we're spending our time in the prophecy of Amos. And Amos, as a 8th century BC northern prophet, prophesying against Jeroboam II's Israel. You could say that maybe they didn't see it coming. That's right, this guy from the south, an orchardist, an agribusiness guy, and his dealings with the north is coming up, inspired by God. He begins to spit bars. He begins to preach. He begins to prophesy. Maybe their defenses weren't alerted yet. Eventually, Amos would be talking about them because he starts with accusations about things that are happening around the globe. Douglas Stewart, an Old Testament commentator on this book, sees a geographical pattern to what we're about to see. That, that Amos is kind of reaching up and reaching down and reaching up and reaching down around the nation of Israel and eventually comes closer and closer to home. So perhaps Amos starting to talk about all the nations around Israel and their activity and how God is going to come against their bad acting, they might just be like, get him, get him. You ever been that guy in a class where the teacher is laying into the guy you just don't like or the girl you don't just can't stand in class and the teacher's just laying into him and you're like, get him, get him, get him. We love to see our enemies get in trouble, don't we? And I think Israel is probably responding that way. It gets closer and closer to home. As finally, he's talking about Judah. Let's go ahead and read the text, and we're going to read the text, and we're going to talk about the accusation. What do we learn from this string of prophecies against Israel's neighbors? Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Damascus, and for four, I will not revoke the punishment, because they have threshed Gilead with threshing sledges of iron. So I will send a fire upon the house of Hazael, and it shall devour the strongholds of Ben-Hadad. I will break the gate bar of Damascus and cut off the inhabitants from the valley of Aven, and him who holds the scepter from Beth Eden, and the, the people of Syria shall go into exile to Ker, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord for three transgressions of Gaza, and for four I will not revoke the punishment, because they carried into exile a whole people to deliver them up to Edom. So I will send a fire upon the wall of Gaza, and it shall devour her strongholds. I will cut off the inhabitants from Ashdod, and him who holds the scepter of Ashkelon, I will turn my hand against Ekron, and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, says the Lord God. Thus says the Lord for three transgressions of Tyre, and for four I will not revoke the punishment because they have delivered up a whole people to Edom and did not remember the covenant of brotherhood. So I will send a fire upon the wall of Tyre, and it shall devour her strongholds. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not revoke the punishment, because he pursued his brother with the sword and cast off all pity, and, in his, and his anger tore perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. So I will send a fire upon Timon, and it shall devour the strongholds of Basra. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of the Ammonites, and for four, I will not revoke the punishment, because they have ripped open pregnant women in Gilead, that they might enlarge their border. So I will kindle a fire in the wall of Rabbah, and it shall devour her strongholds, with shouting on the day of battle, with a tempest in the day of the whirlwind, and their king shall go into exile, he and his princes together, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Moab, and for four, I will not revoke the punishment, because he burned to lime the bones of the king of Edom. So I will send a fire upon Moab, and it shall devour the strongholds of Kiriath. And Moab shall die amid uproar, amid shouting, and the sound of the trumpet. I will cut off the ruler from its midst, and will kill all its princes with him, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Judah, and for four, I will not revoke the punishment, because they have rejected the law of the Lord, and have not kept his statutes. But their lies have led them astray, those after which their fathers walked. So I will send a fire upon Judah and it shall devour the strongholds of Jerusalem. So there's a pattern, three and four, for three and four, for three and four, and it's repeated for seven different nations, and finally, an eighth nation, Israel itself. This pattern of three and four is a Hebrew numeral parallel. Uh, it's a, it is an expression of saying, it's just been too many offenses. And so, let me quote Stuart on that. So, God has had enough of what he's seeing in each one of these countries. 
And what's interesting is a couple of observations. It's almost like God, through Amos, is like reading the newspaper. Like he sees the current events and he's shocked at them. Did you know that God cares about what's happening in the world? Did you know that God sees it? Did you know that God takes all sin personally? All of the brokenness in the world grieves the heart of God. And did you know that God will act? So since my medium is not paper, but it's video, let's just say that we can simulate some of this experience through the ambiance of a newscast. My name is Nathan McHarden. I'm your host here tonight. Welcome to News in the Levant, your authority on ancient Near Eastern current events. Yes, that is an oxymoron. Ancient Near Eastern current events. But let's dive in. We've got many headlines tonight. Welcome. We have breaking news to report today. Damascus, the capital of Aram, has indeed started to destroy Gilead. They were utterly unmerciful. They even cut down children and pregnant women. So I'm going to throw these infographics up here, and if you guys want to read these, feel free. As you can see, Damascus, capital city of Aram, well, they did some really bad stuff in a region of Israel called Gilead. God has reported that the strongholds of Damascus will burn. This just in, Gaza, a city of Philistia, has indeed captured and sold into slavery a whole group of people. Yep, Gaza, one of the cities of Philistia, well, they took a whole group of people, men, women, and children, and trafficked them to eat them. Not cool. Yes, because of Gaza's human trafficking, God is coming against the city and their strongholds. This just in, the city of Tyre, infamous for its slave trade, has indeed trafficked a whole group of people. Tyre, one of the richest cities in all of Phoenicia, has also trafficked a whole people group. For this, God will come even against the jewel of Phoenicia. Indeed, God has reported that their strongholds will burn. In our ongoing coverage of the city of Edom, we are reporting that the long history of violence between Edom and Israel continues to this day. Edom, the descendants of Esau, part of the Abrahamic nations, had a long history of bad acting towards Israel. Oh, and what's that? This breaking in. God indeed will come against the strongholds of Edom. The Desert Confederation of Ammon has indeed continued their history of violence. Ammon was known for its own aggressions at the border. What's that? Yes, indeed we have breaking news that God is coming against the strongholds of Ammon. I think we're, yes, we're gonna go to the field for this one. We have some shocking, uh, disturbing news. Hey, Nathan, hello viewers. Thanks for joining me here in the field. You know, I've misplaced the king of Ammon's remains. I'm a little confused. You see, I thought he was right here, but it appears I can't find him unless this is all that is left. I think he's on my fingers. Yes, Moab has burned the remains of the king of Ammon. I'll let you pause this. Basically, that was not cool in the ancient world. Such a shocking crime has not been reported on this station yet. And yes, it appears God is coming against the strongholds of Moab. We've been reporting this story for a number of years, but as you know, Judah is continuing its covenant disobedience to Yahweh, God of Israel. You can pause here, but you can also read about it throughout a lot of the Old Testament. They are engaging in idolatry. They are engaging in injustice. And indeed, they are experiencing infidelity to God. Yes, this just in, God has pronounced that he is coming against the strongholds of even Judah. That's right, Jerusalem. 
So each one of these headlines, God sees them. God sees the injustice around the world and he cares. He cares deeply and not only does he care, he's going to do something about these grievances. He's going to do something about people's pain. The point of contention in each one of these prophetic blocks is God is going to come against their strongholds. And there's an image that reoccurs in the book of Amos, this idea of fire. So each one of these judgment oracles has the image of fire, but what is that fire directed to? It's directed to their strongholds, their fortifications, their courtyards, their palaces, as Stuart would see it, their places of pride. What we can see here is that all of the nations around Israel, and as we'll see, Israel itself, they're prideful. They're prideful and they're persisting in their injustice. And so there's this connection here between pride and the ability to commit atrocities. That perhaps if they were humbled or humiliated, maybe they would see the brokenness they're causing. And so this judgment, this fire, this attack at the symbols of their pride is redemptive. You see, the idea that God would even call out other nations suggests an implicit covenant with them. Let me boil that down. You see, God is in relationship with all of humanity. God made humanity in his image. Genesis chapter 10, uh, we often skip over the genealogies, but it's a table of nations revealing that all of humanity is in fact one family. Israel has a special kind of put a ring on it kind of relationship with Yahweh, covenant God of Israel. Keep in mind that God has a generic or a general covenant with all of humanity. We have here an international God, a God that reads the newspaper, if you will, and is sensitized to the plight of the Ammonites who are mourning their king. He's sensitized to the plight of the people of Gilead. He's sensitized to the people who are human trafficked around the globe. You know this. You know that God cares about human brokenness. You know that God, quote unquote, reads the headlines and cares about human pain and suffering. So the question I have of you is, do you, do we, church, What I want to challenge you to do this week is think about the headlines that you see, local, regional, national, abroad. Think about the headlines that pain you, that cause you to scratch your head and ask, God, do you see what's happening to these people? Do you see what's happening in this place? I also want to think about, is there injustice happening right now that our strongholds, that our prideful places are blind to? You see, God takes all injustice personally. He takes all human pain personally. So I know that is a bit of a disorienting tour of some ancient history, and it seems like high context and doesn't have a whole lot to do with the day. But maybe we can chew on it this way. That God sees all of the injustices in the world, that he cares about it, that he is pained by it, grieved by it, and will act to correct it. And we see the ultimate fulfillment of this at the cross. And we see the ultimate trajectory of the cross's fulfillment at the second coming. That one day, God will come and and all places, these strongholds, these places of human pride that perpetuate injustice, The mountains will be made low and the valleys will be made high. And God's kingdom is a wonderful and amazing place where injustice does not exist. As God surveys the world, cares about it, and wants to act, can we do the same? Can we have the heart of God? Can we have the boldness of Amos to speak into the injustices around us? I challenge you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to find your prophetic voice, a voice that 
reminds everyone that we have a relationship available to us with the living God and that he comes to tear down everything that's getting in the way of that, including ourselves, including our pride, including our perpetual injustices. God wants to level that out. God wants to restore his relationship with all of humanity. And he does that through Christ. So, brothers and sisters, let's find our prophetic voice. Let's care about what's going on in our world. And may we, like Amos, we can speak into it with boldness. So for three, but for four offenses, seven times, and next week we'll see there's an eighth repetition as Amos finally, after his geographic tour, lands in Israel. And so perhaps, guys, it's easier to hear God's correction of us when we realize that we're kind of on par with everyone else. That he views all sins and all injustices as worthy of his attention. And so injustices perpetrated by our country or our organization, the church, are also worthy of rebuke to God just as much as other nations and their atrocities and injustices are to him as well.